This week on Sprague Wood Turning, we are going to combine these two pieces of maple burl along with some crystal purple and some forever glow midnight purple to make an awesome 65,000 subscriber giveaway bowl. First order of business is to cut these pieces to fit the bucket. Uh, I didn't see the use for a circle cutting jig this week, so I just used the bottom of the bucket to trace it out. I did remember to tilt the table on my bandsaw, and the reason for that, of course, is because the bucket is tapered. So if you tilt the table on your bandsaw, your pieces will fit better in the bucket. Just keep in mind that when you do this, you're kind of committed to what's up and what is down. So another thing that we need to talk about this week is I've gotten a couple of emails from people saying that Designer Epoxy isn't honoring the code inlay gem. And after talking to the owner um, this past week, he said, he said, yeah, so the code inlay gem was really only to be used for the first time purchase of Designer Epoxy. Uh, there's been some miscommunication between him and I, and I, I'm assuming that's probably more on my end than is, is on his end. So uh, I really do truly uh, apologize for that. And, you know, his, his, what he was conveying to me was that, first of all, he has the best price for epoxy on the market, and he makes one of the best, if not the best epoxies on the market. So, you know, he's still going to honor Code Inlay Gym if you're the first time purchasing epoxy. But after that, um, you, you know, he's, he just can't honor the code. Uh, right now, he's offering free shipping to the U.S., which is costing him probably 40 or $50 each time he ships something to uh, to the States. And, you know, he said, like, I, he said, Jim, I just can't do it. I can't, I can't offer all this free shipping and, you know, and make a living at it. Uh, but he said, by all means, if you're the first time buying epoxy from him, use my code. He will honor that 100%. And to make up for maybe not being able to use um, the code again, he's going to throw in some free pigments in with your order. So, you know, I, I truly do apologize to anybody that kind of thought, we were misleading them because that certainly was not the case. Uh, I just, <laughs> when, when I was getting these emails, I, I, I contacted him and he said, yeah, like I can't, I can't do it. Like I'm, I'm losing a ton of money by doing this and by offering free shipping. And, you know, just, I, I truly do apologize for that. Um, but you know, you are still getting a fantastic epoxy at a fantastic price. So, uh, U.S. customers, your dollar is so much stronger than ours, and at free shipping, it is a no-brainer to me. So shop around, and you'll see that Designer Epoxy does have the best price on the market for their epoxy. And, you know, all I can say is you've seen the results of it here on this channel. So if you haven't tried them, certainly do give them a try because they make fantastic products. All right, so what I've got here is some glow-in-the-dark uh, midnight purple forever glow and um, I've mixed it really strong and what I'm gonna do is paint all of the surfaces that you see here and in here and I might try and put some down inside of these holes and um, the reason why I put the tape on there is if there's any left over I'll just dump it all down in there and hopefully that will give us some glow down in there. So I want to put this on quite heavy because if you don't you're probably not going to see it in the finished piece. And yeah it's going to be messy and it probably runs everywhere but I don't really see any other way to do this. So what I'm going to do is put this on here let it cure overnight and then we will cast these pieces tomorrow. Really nice spikes in this this one, that's for sure. And 
there I'm tempted to just kind of leave that in these crevices and I think that I probably will uh, this one on the other side though might be a little harder to do if I want to fill that top cavity uh, this will definitely give us some glow there's no doubt about it This is probably going to take about an hour for it to start to set set up where it's not going to be hopefully runny. It's funny as I watch this, I keep thinking to myself that you know I use so much duct tape that you know I sh I should or should have some shares in in some sort of duct tape company because I probably would be paying myself. All right, I'm just going to stick around and burn off any more bubbles that come up, and then we'll see you tomorrow. So it is the next day. Everything has dried up. Uh, I was using the Artcast. I did show that a little earlier. Uh, the great thing about Artcast is, of course, you know, it, it dries overnight. 16 to 24 hours, I believe, is what the recommendation is. This year was 16 hours, and it was perfectly fine. All right, so I've mixed up almost a liter of the crystal purple. Uh, I thought I had the camera on, but I didn't. <laughs> but I, it's just a uh, quarter teaspoon of the crystal purple, and this is about a liter of resin. So probably going to need two, possibly three. Uh, I guess we'll find out. It's deceiving because there is quite a big cavity underneath it here. Yeah. We're probably going to need three of these. I know that this color may look strong to you, but when you put it on the stick, I mean, you can barely see the color. So it's a little deceiving at times when you're mixing up epoxy and, and uh, pigments. So, you know, just keep that in mind when you're doing so. Well, it's to the right level. Well, I should say it's to the top of the piece, but I know that this wood is going to absorb more of that, so i got to give it at least another half a liter. All right, well, that's it. I'm going to throw this in the pressure pot for three days, and we'll see you guys later. Well, there you go. Three days later. Loving that purple. Lost a little bit. Maybe about, geez, eighth of an inch, not a whole lot. All right, let's see if we can get this out. Well, I had to use the floor, but that explains a lot. Took half of the tape off the bottom of the bucket with it, so it was free. This was holding it. In the past, you've seen me use dividers to find center on these pieces. Uh, these are just templates that I use for my circle cutting jig, and they you know, basically fit perfectly onto the top of the casting. And I know that the hole is centered because I cut it on the circle cutting jig. That looks pretty good to me. Finally on to turning. So I'm starting with the Hercules here and you'll use this, you'll see me use this pretty much through the whole video. 
with some maybe some odds and sods of other stuff. So, you know, a few weeks back, I asked people what topics you would like for me to cover when I'm doing these voiceovers, because a lot of this is repetitive. And um, by all means, if you have a topic that you would like for me to cover, please leave it in the comments down below. This week, I'd like to talk about pressure pots and vacuum chambers. And a lot of people, I, I get an unbelievable amount of emails about this. You know, if I had to pick one, what would it be? And, you know, if I had to pick one, I would probably go with the pressure pot. But I believe that there is a purpose for both of them in the wood turning world and certainly in my work. And for, you know, the idea behind a vacuum um, system is that you submerge the wood in the resin. You then pull a vacuum on that, and what that does, it pulls all of the air out of the wood piece that is submerged in the resin. Now, since that wood is submerged in the resin, when you release the vacuum, it, the wood has no choice but to draw that resin into its pores. So, you know, this is how you stabilize wood, and I do it even with this, this um, casting epoxy as well. And it is a, it's a real benefit to have both of them. So if you can put it in the vacuum chamber for a couple hours, like you can, maybe you probably can get away with three hours with designer epoxy, the deep cast, then, you know, when you, when you're done with that, and you throw it into the pressure pot, you're going to get better results. So what's the pressure pot for then? The pressure pot will push epoxy into areas that it ordinarily wouldn't flow. And it will also, if there are any bubbles that are left over in the resin, it compresses those bubbles so small that they're hard to see with the naked eye. So this is the whole idea behind using a vacuum system like you see me use, and then the pressure pot on top of that. Uh, you know, you're, you're probably going to be good either way, but if I had to pick one of the two because of expense, then I would probably go with the pressure pot. Along with that, the two pressure pots that I have are from California Air Tools, and there is two links in the description down below the video, two Amazon links, where you can buy the ones that I have. Uh, they are very robust, and they have really large wing nuts on them, so they're easy to clamp down, and uh, doesn't put a lot of stress on your hands when you're trying to tighten the lid down. The vacuum chamber that I do have, I bought off of eBay, uh, I'm, you know, I, I don't know, probably 15 years ago, and I haven't seen it, mind you, I guess I really haven't gone looking for it since I own it, but I haven't seen another one like it since. Uh, essentially, mine is just a very large cooking pot, and then there's a one inch thick acrylic top, I'm assuming it's acrylic, and, you know, just a couple of fittings in it and a gauge. I mean, really, a vacuum chamber doesn't have to be complicated, like, any more than that, really. Uh, probably the more bigger expense would be getting the vacuum pump itself. Now, of course, I reuse the vacuum pump that you see me use for my vacuum chuck on the lathe. That's why I have it on a rolling cart, so I can roll it around and use it for different things. Um... It's been a great acquisition, and I'm really glad that I bought it. Uh, I, I'm assuming that if you had to buy something similar to that size again, it's probably going to be over a thousand bucks, maybe even more than I, I don't know. But again, like I haven't priced one out in a very long time because I haven't had any need to. But you know, it is really, really been a great thing to own, and I do recommend having both of them if you can swing it. I realize that a lot of times this this hobby can get very expensive and um, so I certainly understand why a lot of people's budget will only have one. I looked at it from a business standpoint that I could write it off against my business and it certainly has improved my wood turning over the years so you know again if you can if you can afford to get both please do so because it will certainly benefit you in the end. One of the other things uh, going along with expense in this hobby that we like to do is tool sets. Um, now, if you just want to make bowls, bowls with no resin, 
really all you need is a bowl gouge and a parting tool. You do not really need anything else more than that. So if you're looking at buying these big tool sets that are three and four and five, six hundred dollars, in the end, you may not use a lot of the tools in those sets. So, you know, I've never personally bought a set of wood turning tools. I've only bought individual tools that I thought I would need. And along with all of that, a lot of times these tool sets are just designed for spindle work, which I do not do a lot of, and which, uh, to be straight up honest with you, I, I don't care for. I don't, working, working between centers and making pepper mills and spindles, it, it's not my gig. It never has been. I'm a bowl guy through and through, and that's really what I like to make. So a lot of these, a lot of times when you look at these sets, they're more designed for people that are doing center work. So that's another reason why I, I guess maybe I never really broke down and bought a, uh, a tool set. Now, if you are going to be doing center work, then you know what, one of these tool sets is definitely worth your while getting into. Um, along with that, a lot of people may possibly try and use uh, spindle tools when it comes to m making bowls and do not do that. If you try to use a roughing gou gouge or just a normal um, spindle gouge when you're doing bowls, what can happen is it doesn't have a, a really robust tang and that tang can snap off and that tool can go flying. So if you're gonna do bowls, make sure you buy a bowl gouge that's made for doing bowls and not use a spindle gouge because it can be very dangerous to do so. Now, if you are looking at getting into wood turning, what I would suggest to you is look, uh, do a search for wood turning clubs, and hopefully there's one in your area. That's not going to be for everybody, but you know, uh, a lot of times you should be able to find one near you. There, there's a couple of them actually here in Ottawa that I've never gone to. Uh, I'm already kind of established turner. Uh, that's not to say that I shouldn't go there because, you know, I, I'm a creature of habit. I like to do things the way that I do them, but that doesn't, and I, I don't certainly know everything about wood turning. Don't even think that for a minute because I don't. So really I should be going to these meetings too. But by going to these meetings, uh, hopefully there's going to be different lays there that you can try to see what you like the best. Uh, you'll be able to try different tools as well. And, you know, the other turners that, that are there, they may have older tools that they might be willing to sell to you. So, you know, try and do it as cheap as you can when you're first starting because, you know, it's not for everybody. Um, like I've said in the past, most woodworkers have a lathe in their shop, but, you know, for the most part, it gets covered up and it really isn't used all that much. So before you go through, you know, this massive expense to buy wood turning tools and a lathe, make sure that it really appeals to you before you do so. All right, so first time in a while that we've had to mix up some CA glue. And so what I'm gonna do, and I've done this before, it's a Starbond Thin, and I'm gonna use some of the Midnight Purple Forever Glow in these little spots where there was bark inclusions. Um, I've never mixed the glow pigments with the CA, so I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna react. But I guess we'll find out. Yeah, some of it tends to harden right away. This is the first time in a long time that I've had to do so much filling with this burl. Uh, I kept filling this this one particular hole time and time again, and it, I kept having issues with it. So, you know, I in total, I think I probably ended up filling a few of these holes three or four times before they got to the stage where I was really happy with them. 
I will say that this grain has been quite difficult to cut like burrow grain usually is. So what I think I'm going to do is just saturate both of these burls here with the thin CA glue and then hopefully it will cut easier as well. We may end up losing all of the stuff that we put in there, but if I didn't put it in there, then it'd be an issue because it's just the way it goes. So I am essentially stabilizing this burl. And if you are curious, I used one ounce of CA glue to do this. And after this was done, the grain did cut a lot better. It's not so bad on the outside of the form, but there are still areas here that really should be stabilized with the CA. There. Now we should be able to cut this grain clean and then we'll be able to move on to sanding. I'll let that sit for about 15 minutes and then we'll get it back on the lathe. So before we can do any sanding, it's best to trim away all of this CA glue. And like I've said in the past, if you don't do this, then you're going to be using a lot of sandpaper to cut this back. Uh, the other thing with that too is uh, the CA glue, when it's airborne, can be quite aggressive. So, you know, this is another reason to have a self-powered respirator, uh, something to protect your lungs. So, you know, I would sooner trim that away with, with the gouge than sand it away, if you know what I mean. I was just pointing out that, you know, I got to take this thing off the lathe and go fill it again. I, you know, it, it's, it's one of the more aggravating things to deal with when you're, when you're chasing down voids. You know, if you put the CA glue in you, and you don't use any accelerator, then you won't get any foaming and bubbles typically. But keep in mind that that CA glue is really like water thin. So it, it's going to migrate into the surrounding wood, which you want it to. But, you know, you're, it's going to take a while for that to cure up. Like, you know, almost a day if you have a really deep void and you fill it with the CA glue. So... Finally, on to sanding. I'm just using my air-powered sander on the outside of this piece because I can't get the drill in because it's hitting on the headstock. So it's nice to have a right-angle drill to do so, and it does a great job. And you'll see, I'll sand this piece to 180 and then make a decision that, you know, I just don't like the look of that inlay area, and I change it. All right, so this pinky color right here with the, uh, the glow-in-the-dark is just, it's not doing it for me. So I'm going to grind this out and there's another little spot there and then I'll just put this color back into it and then we will get back to sanding. Another indispensable tool in my inventory is a Dremel tool and I'm just using a little burr that, I, that came with the set so I can't even really tell you the name of it but it seems to work decently. Uh, this is after filling it with the purple tinted epoxy or the t purple tinted CA glue, I should say. And then now uh, grind that away, flush with the surface, and then carry on with sanding. And I sand it from 60 to 800. And then, of course, we're using the triply buffing compound uh, before we use some denatured alcohol to clean it off prior to our first coat of finish going on. All right, it's the best part. Uh, we are going to put the first coat of Waterlux Original VOC Medium Sheen. That's what we're going to use this week. Well, there you go. Um, it's probably not as translucent as I want it to be. But, you know, I've got the light shining this way and it is very translucent this way so I still think that we're going to be able to see our glow in the dark but we're not going to see that there it is there I'm not going to show it till the very end and then we'll know it it will be a surprise 
not only to you, but to me. All right, we'll see you tomorrow for the new second coat. All right, so yesterday, after I put the finish on, I noticed there's a little divot right here. So I'm going to try and get rid of that. It's going to bother me if I don't. So I'm going to start with some 500 grit and 6 and 800, and then hopefully we'll be able to flatten that out. As a new wood turner, this is going to be one of the things that you're probably going to struggle with. And the tendency is to overuse the drill at the very center point of the bowl. Now, I don't get this totally out, but I think that it does improve it. I didn't want to go all the way back to 60 grit and redo all the sanding. Uh, but anyway, it's just something to really pay attention to when you are <laughs> turning bowls because you can it's very easy to get that little divot right in the dead center. All right, we are back again with the Waterlux Medium Sheen Original VOC. Well, you know, it's not 100% gone, but it's better than it was. These long, flat surfaces, I find it's very easy to put that little divot in there. And I know that most people are saying, ah, oh, you're crazy, but, you know, it's the perfectionist in me that doesn't like that stuff. <laughs> All right, I'm assuming that it's going to need another coat. I'll do that the same as the second coat, and we'll see you guys when we're doing the bottom. It is in fact the next day, so I'm just getting ready to part this piece off the lathe. And if you're curious what the parting tool that I like to use, I have a 3 16 inch parting tool from Crown. Crown makes fantastic tools, and that's what I like to use. Finally on to doing the bottom. Again, this is my vacuum chuck. Uh, absolutely fantastic tool. Uh, I started off with the Hercules, but the Hercules was getting kind of gummed up with all the hot melt glue that was on the very bottom. So once I get the majority of that gone, I go back to the Hercules and uh, finish it off. That way you can see I lifted the tool rust a little bit too. The back of the handle was tilted up a little bit to avoid catches. I find this is one of the best ways to do it so you get a nice flat surface. And the bottom was sanded to, uh, I think I actually started at 120 to 800 as well. We haven't picked a winner for this beautiful bowl, so let's do that. So I, I totally forgot. I've actually been charging the bowl up in the sun right now. So let's see if this thing does actually glow in the dark before we draw a name. All right, this is only out in the sun for a couple of minutes. Let's see what we get here. Well, at one spot where it's mixed really heavy, certainly is glowing quite nicely. There's another spot there. It is along the edge. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there it is there. Not as bright as I'd hoped it would be, that's for sure. Don't really see much on the other side either. Now yeah, there's a little bit there, you can see it. But that there that piece right out back, or sorry, on the back side is really bright. Some here on the end too, when you look at it the right way. There it is there. Not as good as I had hoped. These are the six names that the random YouTube comment picker has selected. And the way it works is I load the video URL into the program and then it selects a winner for that video. 
these are the six names including so there's been six videos including the 60,000 subscriber giveaway bowl video so let's throw these into a bowl and select a name good luck everyone or these six all right might as well use our bowl so there's our six names going in and I'll just try and push these around one name up here. Who's it going to be? And the winner of the 65,000 subscriber giveaway bowl is Teresa A. Congratulations. Send me an email to spragwoodturning at gmail.com and I will get your prize mailed out to you. It still needs a couple of, well, it just needs a code to finish on the bottom and then it should be ready to go to its new home. So let's have a chat about our bowl. It is 10 and a half inches across and two and a half inches tall. And it is actually a true river bowl. So just some resin running down the center of it. A purple river, if you will. Uh, there are only two coats of finish on here. So, you know, looking at it, I think that it needs another coat of finish in a couple of areas. So I'll do redo the whole thing, including the bottom. And speaking of the bottom, there is the bottom. Get the camera to pick, focus in on that. So I just signed on the wood and not on the resin. A uh, little bummed about the, um, the glow in the dark. I just think that there's just not enough surface area to really you really need to concentrate it or you know if it was all glow in the dark and the resin here that then it certainly would pop for sure but uh it was kind of an experiment and um didn't work exactly as planned but still a beautiful bowl uh that little divot in there still there not as bad as it was these things drive me nuts ah so other news i was just talking to gabriel from designer epoxy and you know, he feels really bad that he, he can't accommodate everybody with my code. So what he's gonna do is every 10,000 subscribers, he is gonna donate a three gallon kit to the channel. So the only stipulation is that it can only be in Canada and continental US. Uh, sorry, Alaska and Hawaii, we can't, uh, we can't look after you. But uh, Canada and continental US, um, you're open for this draw and all that we ask is that you put designer epoxy in the comments that's it nothing else that way I can use the YouTube random comment picker to select that in that name so what we're gonna do is at 70,000 that's where we're gonna start the draw and you know by the time this airs I might even be close to uh, 66,000 so hopefully it won't be too much longer we'll be able to give away a three gallon kit so thanks again, Gabriel, for that. Uh, I really appreciate it, and so do my, so do my, uh, my followers. Uh, next week, we are going to be doing another hollow form. I was asked to do something that resembles a peacock, and I'm not sure if it's going as planned or not. So please come on back for that. Well, that's it. Till next video. Take care. Stay safe. Don't forget that bell. Don't forget that thumbs up and please share my videos with your friends. See you next week.